Hello, good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everyone, wherever you are. You're welcome to the Dr. EIS Bass channel again. And today we have an interesting series, the histopathology practice questions, which uh, we have done because of popular demand. And um, it's going to be a series of questions. It's interesting for medical lab students, nurses, and doctors. And uh, we'll start very simply with the simple things and go more technical as the series increases. We have a little feature where we have an explanation because I have not done any teaching video on this. So enjoy. Like I said, we'll be doing the histopathology practice questions. I remain Dr. E. Izibasi. This is the first in this series. And please, I want to ask that you uh, share this resource. Please try to comment. It's a free resource and we need your support to be able to keep working. Question one, the reception area in a histopathology lab is where a first point of contact with the laboratory is made, samples are received and registered. B, samples undergoing gro undergo grossing. C, tissue undergoes processing. D, tissue is fixed. The answer is A. Question two, fixation is the foundation of histopathology because A, it stops all cellular functions and degenerative changes. B, it's the foundation on which all subsequent pro uh, procedures build. C, it preserves tissue for further analysis. I would go with D, that is all of the above because all these statements are true. Question three, which option shows the balanced equation for Pearl's crucial blue reaction for hemosiderine? All right, your answer is A, because the correct equation would involve ferric chloride reacting with potassium ferrocyanide to form a blue compound which detects hemosiderine, which are ion deposits. Question four, what color does ferric ion stain in Pearl's Prussian blue reaction. The question already gives out the answer, and the answer is uh, blue. And that particular test is for detecting um, iron deposits in tissues. Question five What color do nuclei stain in the pearls Prussian blue reaction? They stain red, unlike in the H and E, where it stains blue. In this particular staining technique, it stains. Um, red because the nuclei in the tissue section stained with pearl crucial blue typically take up a red color when counter stained with the nuclear fast red, which contrasts the blue stained ion deposits. All right, the next question hemalum staining occurs due to its ability to bond with which group DNA? It has ability to have ionic bonding with phosphate groups in the DNA. All right. So what type of dye is eosine? Actually, eosine is an acid dye, and it means that it carries a negative charge and binds to positively charged cellular components like proteins, giving the cytoplasm a pink or red hue. Question eight, which bonding mechanism does eosine utilize in staining tissue? It actually utilizes ionic bonding, though there are other bonding like the um, uh, coordination, uh, coordinate, coordination bonding and some other weak bondings. But principally, eosine tissue uh, uses the ionic bonding where negatively charged dye binds to positively charged uh, cellular structures like proteins. All right. So question nine, what is the practice of initially fixing with 10% formalin and then refixing with another fixative call. This is actually called secondary fixation because the first one is the primary fixation. And it's a process where the tissues, you first fix them with formalin, then you refix them with another fixative depending on what kind of tissue it is to enhance preservation for specific uh, staining procedures. Question 10, what is carnoise fluid known for? It is known for rapid fixation. It's a rapid fixative that fixes both, that fixes and dehydrates tissues 
at once and that makes it particularly useful for preserving nucleic acid and uh, glycogen. The preferred thickness for tissues in paraffin wax processing is, is actually about three millimeters because for effective paraffin wax infiltration, tissue sections need to be trimmed to a thickness of around three millimeters to ensure proper penetration of the paraffin. Question number 12, positively charged lights adhere tissues by, or they do that by A, using protein glue, B, using an adhesive compound with a positive charge, C, coating with poly, lysine all of the above so positively charged lights actually adhere to tissue by using various methods including protein glue positively charged adhesives uh protein coatings which help to bind these tissues sections to the slide question 13 alternatives to fixations include all set a frozen section b heat c freeze drying d <laughs> salinizing our answer will be D because salinizing is not a recognized alternative to fixation. Whereas other things like frozen section, heat, and freeze drying are commonly used alternative to pre tissue preservation. Question 14. Which of the following are synthetic mounting media based on polystyrene? We have A, Canada balsam and xylene, B, DPX and B. Butyl phthalate plasticized tyrene, C. Permount and butyl phthalate plasticized tyrene, D. Eosin and hematoxylin. Your answer will be DPX and butyl phthalate plasticine tyrene, yes, tyrene because they are both synthetic mounting media that are based on polystyrene and they are commonly used in histology for mounting stain tissue section. This, uh, an advantage of this um, mounting media is that they provide a clear, durable finish that preserves tissue slides for long-term under observation under a microscope. All right. Question number 15. Bluing of a stained section stained with hemalum solution can be achieved by using A, a solution with ammonia, B, Tap water at pH higher than 7, C, none of the above, D, all of the above. So what we do, we can blue with um, a solution with ammonia that is an alkaline solution in general, okay? So bluing is done to neutralize the acidity of hemolog and restore the blue color of the stained nuclei. So you achieve it with either tap water of a higher pH, ammonia solution, that's alkaline solutions actually. Question 16, paraffin wax infiltration depends on A, simple fluid replacement of clearance by molten paraffin wax, B, three changes of molten wax, C, no agitation, D, none of the above. A is your answer because paraffin wax infiltration involves replacing the clearing agent with molten paraffin, therefore allowing for proper tissue preservation as well as section, which is cutting of the tissue. And the process typically requires fluid replacement. Okay, question number 17. The cryostat is a valuable tool for rapid histological analysis because it is used for cutting A, frozen tissue sections, B, resin sections, C, paraffin embedded tissues, D, Semi-solid paste. From the word cryo, cryo means cold. Cryostat means it's a microtome that cuts frozen tissue sections. All right. And it's usually used when you need rapid histologically uh, histological analysis, especially when you're having surgery. And you need to know whether to pluck that thing out or not. <laughs> Question number 18. The clearance angle or knife tilt of a microtome knife should be approximately should be approximately 30 to 80 degrees because the that particular degree the 30 to 80 degrees allows for smooth sectioning 
and avoids damage to the tissue. Question number 19. Preventive microstome maintenance includes all of the following, except A, covering the microtome when not in use, B, cleaning the microtome thoroughly, C, lubricating the microtome, D, using the microtome without preventive maintenance. Wow. You actually don't want to be doing this because the microtome is a very, very expensive machine and you won't want that machine to spoil on your work. So preventive maintenance is very critical for proper functioning of a microtome. So if you fail to perform regular maintenance, it can lead to poor performance or damage to the machine. Question 20. One of these is not a property of a good physitis. A, color restoration. B, hardening of tissue. C, good optical differentiation. D, penetrating tissues and cells evenly. All right, your answer is color restoration. Color restoration is certainly not a function of a physitis. What physitis are meant to do is to preserve the tissues by hardening them, provide a good optical differentiation so you can differentiate things on that microtome, as well as ensuring an even penetration so that these tissues can be preserved. Question number 21. Osmolarity affects physician when A, the solution is hypotonic, B, the solution is isotonic, C, the solution is hypertonic, D, all of the above. I will go with all of the above because if your solution is hypotonic, your tissue will swell, all right? If your solution is hypotonic, your tissue will shrink. And if the solution is isotonic, you will maintain correct cell size during the fixation pr uh, process. That is why we say that uh, the osmolarity, whether hypotonicity, hypertonicity, or isotonicity affects fixation. Question number 22. Formaldehyde fixes proteins by A, oxidative reaction, B, stabilizing protein mass, C, preserving morphology, D, all of the above. I would go with all of the above because formaldehyde fixes proton through several mechanisms, including forming methylene uh, bridges between amino acids, stabilizing the protein, as well as preserving cellular morphology. Question number 23. One of the following is not used for coating microtome bleed. That would be pro, uh, phosphorus. You could use borom, you could use platinum, you could use uh, boron for uh, chromium rather for um, coating on the blade thereby you maintain the sharpness of the blade and you also reduce the amount of friction question number 24 which of the following is not a factor of importance in decalcification what is decalcification you're trying to remove calcium from the bone so a fixing prior to decalcification B, the size of the specimen. C, the amount of the decal solution. D, the amount of formaldehyde. Well, I would go with... I would go with D. That is the amount of formaldehyde. It's not a factor. All right? Because um, what, what tends to affect uh, decalcification is how big is the sample? because that will affect its penetration time. And then what's the amount of decalcification uh, solution you're using? And has the tissue been fixed before or not fixed? Those are things that affect the rate of decalcification. Uh, decalcification. <laughs> Question number 25. Which of the following can be used to remove mercury pigment? Your answer will be iodine. Iodine is used in removing mercury pigment from tissues that have been fixed in mercury-containing fixatives. Examples include uh, Zenka's fluid. Question number 26. The purpose of the post-osmication process is to preserve which of these is actually to preserve lipids because you use post-osmification. <laughs> to preserve lipids in tissue sections. And uh, the substance, osmium tetroxide, 
is commonly used to stabilize and stain pit structures. Question number 27. Pitifies double embedding uses which of the following? It actually uses celloidin, paraffin, um, wax, and it uses that to improve the quality of tissue sectioning, particularly for harder tissues. Question number 28. When light illuminates a dye, which of the following effects may be observed? A, phosphorescence, B, fluorescence, C, fading, D, all of the above. Light illuminating a dye can cause all these things to happen because of their chemical structure and the interaction of light with the tissue or the interaction of the dye with the tissue. So next question, which of the following chemicals inhibit the removal of dyes from tissues? We have mordants, we have modifiers, we have solvents, we have trapping agents. I will go with trapping agents because trapping agents are chemicals which inhibit the removal of dyes from tissues. So rather than stop the removal of the dye completely, what they do is to slow down how fast those dyes are removed so that the tissues which have more dye in them that is are more intensely stained still retain a large amount of dye when the background has been decolorized. And examples of trapping agents include iodine in a gram stain, uh, picric acid in gram Wegart's method, as well as sodium chloride in the salt gram technique. Question number 30. The molecular structure responsible for the color of dyes is called a chromophore. It's that part of a molecule that is responsible for absorbing light and imparting the color to dyes. Without that, a uh, dye would not be able to do what it does. All right. So having come to the end of this, I want to say thank you very much. And like I always say, you are my MVPs. Please stop support, don't stop supporting. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you and bye.